When you think of the word harem, do you imagine a life of luxury, silk cushions, and beautiful women lounging in a palace? The truth behind the lives of Ottoman concubines is much more complex and, often, far less glamorous than many would think. Though a few concubines managed to gain power and influence, most lived under strict control, facing isolation, exploitation, and constant competition. Let's dive deeper into the harsh realities these women endured within the walls of the Ottoman palace. One of the bitterest truths about Ottoman concubines is that most of them were originally slaves, captured or bought from foreign lands. These women weren't born into nobility or luxury, but were often taken from their homes by force, far from their families and everything they knew. Many concubines were bought in slave markets, particularly in Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, or taken as prisoners of war. The majority of these women came from Christian territories like the Balkans, Eastern Europe, or the Caucasus. Circassian, Georgian, and Ukrainian women were especially sought after because they were prized for their beauty. Once captured, these women were brought to the Ottoman Empire and trained for life in the harem. They were taught to speak Turkish, practice Islam, and learn the ways of palace life, skills that included everything from serving the Sultan to mastering court etiquette. For many, the loss of freedom and family was permanent, and entering the harem marked the beginning of a new, confined life. While the harem was filled with luxurious surroundings, life for the women inside was far from free. Though it may have been beautiful on the outside, the harem functioned like a gilded cage, restricting the movements and actions of the concubines. The women of the harem were constantly monitored. Eunuchs, who were castrated male servants, were responsible for guarding and managing the harem. Their presence ensured that no outside male could enter the harem and no woman could leave without permission. These eunuchs were highly trusted by the Sultan and played an important role in maintaining order within the palace. Once inside the harem, concubines were cut off from the outside world. They couldn't leave the palace grounds or have contact with their families. Many concubines spent their entire lives within the palace walls, living in seclusion from society. Although the palace was grand, for most concubines, it was more of a prison than a place of comfort. Inside the harem, it wasn't just a quiet life of confinement. The concubines lived in a world full of competition, where they fought for the Sultan's attention, trying to secure their place in the palace hierarchy. Their future, and often their survival, depended on whether they could win his favor. Concubines were ranked by their status, with the Sultan's favorites enjoying the most privileges. The highest position a concubine could achieve was Hasiki Sultan, the Sultan's favorite woman, usually the mother of one of his sons. If she bore a son who became the heir, her position was even more secure, and she could wield significant influence, even becoming the most powerful woman in the empire. However, the path to power was not without danger. Concubines often formed alliances or rivalries with one another, trying to climb the social ladder within the harem. Betrayals were common, and women sometimes plotted against one another to gain the upper hand. Poisonings, false accusations, and even secret murders were rumored to occur as concubines and their allies tried to eliminate rivals. For most concubines, their lives were completely dictated by the Sultan and the palace officials. They had little say in what happened to them and were expected to obey without question. Above all, concubines were expected to serve the Sultan sexually. They had no choice in the matter. Refusing the Sultan's advances was not an option. Whether they liked it or not, their role as concubines meant that their value was largely tied to their ability to please the Sultan and bear his children. Many concubines entered the harem as Christians, but were required to convert to Islam once they became part of the palace. This conversion was usually enforced as a way to assimilate them into Ottoman culture. For some women, this forced religious change meant losing their cultural and spiritual identity, making them feel even more disconnected from their past lives. While a few concubines were lucky enough to gain the Sultan's favor and rise in rank, most lived in relative obscurity. These women, who never caught the Sultan's eye or didn't bear children, 
often spent their lives in the background, performing routine tasks and being largely forgotten. The daily life of an unfavored concubine was repetitive and monotonous. They spent their days doing needlework, playing music, or serving the higher-ranking women of the harem. With little chance of improving their position, they lived in quiet anonymity, blending into the crowd of women in the palace. When a sultan died or a new sultan took the throne, the fate of the concubines changed. Many were sent to live in other palaces or exiled to far-off parts of the empire. If they were older and no longer of interest, they might be moved to a smaller, lesser-known residence to live out their days in isolation. Some concubines simply died in the harem, their lives passing in quiet obscurity. Despite the harsh conditions, some concubines did manage to rise to great heights of power. A few concubines left a lasting mark on Ottoman history, proving that even within the confines of the harem, women could wield enormous influence. One of the most famous examples is Harem Sultan, also known as Roxolana. Originally a slave from Ukraine, she rose to become the legal wife of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, which was an extraordinary accomplishment. She had tremendous influence over the Sultan and was known for her political acumen, guiding many of his decisions. Another powerful figure was Kozum Sultan, who became one of the most influential women in Ottoman history. She served as regent for two of her sons, essentially ruling the empire during their reigns. However, her power led to enemies, and she was eventually assassinated in the palace, a reminder of the dangers that came with power in the harem. The life of an Ottoman concubine was a far cry from the romanticized images of silk-clad women lounging in a luxurious paradise. The bitter truths behind their lives reveal a world of ambition, betrayal, and survival, hidden behind the opulent walls of the Ottoman harem.